you guys from briefly on tonight is simply entitled We Ready. All right, then. Oh, y'all already acting right. severe on your boy. Y'all already acting severe. I didn't come all the way to Sanford, Florida for people to act severe on tonight. I said the subject tonight is We Ready. Is there anybody in the house tonight that. We will make it work. My brothers and sisters, on a hot summer day, unsafe bodies of water, unsupervised beaches, reservoirs, and rivers and streams with strong currents are tempting but deadly, especially to those that cannot swim. Much like in the case of Cullen Jones, a New York City native who at the age of five nearly drowned to death due to a similar situation, trying to cool off on a hot summer day but not being able to swim. That situation caused Cullen to develop an absolute fear and no tolerance for bodies of water. But after moving with his family from New York City to Irvington, New Jersey, Cullen seemingly tackled his fear by taking swimming lessons for an entire summer. Cullen now speaks of one summer where he was walking out on the diving board um, in which he squeezed his toes on the edge of the diving board as he stood before his greatest fear, a large body, of water only to turn around and walk back down the diving board. And Cullen ends his story by saying as he took the long journey back down the stairs of the diving board, he said he decided and made up in his mind at that moment, once I get to the bottom of these stairs, I'm jumping in this pool. And from that moment at age seven, he not only tackled his greatest fear, but Cullen Jones went on to make history because he would later join the 2008 U.S. Olympic swim team and become only the second black swimmer to ever attain a gold medal. And what I'm trying to suggest to you tonight, my brothers and sisters, is that it has been statistically proven that one of the greatest failures amongst people the ages of 16 to 65 over the last 20 years in this country was not drugs, it wasn't alcohol, it wasn't sickness nor death. Death. It wasn't failing grades, it wasn't bad relationships, it wasn't the lack of employment, nor was it poverty. But the one, number one thing that led to failure in this life for ages 16 to 65 over the last 20 years has been people being afraid to take risks. Yeah. Or oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me here tonight. So what I need is a couple of people that are up in here tonight that you understand that the Bible tells you that he did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and of of power and you understand that if God be for you then who can be against you and tonight I don't know who I'm speaking to up in this place because about 15 of you are acting sedity in here but I need some folk that don't mind stepping out on faith tonight and you understand that you don't need much that come and go regardless of what my fear may have been before I know now that I'm ready regardless of who's sitting next to me regardless of who acting funny y'all still acting stiff up in this place as if the Lord ain't never did anything for but I don't know about you, but I know for me, for the next 20 years of my life, I know that I'm ready. Do I got anybody else in the house tonight? Yeah. children of Israel were trapped, so to speak, in the desert. And we understand that while they were in the desert, they were complaining, they were grumbling, they were to a point that they wanted to quit, give up, and turn around and go back into slavery in Egypt. Does that sound like some folks up in here on tonight? That your fear of going forward because things stopped for just one day or maybe a week caused you to want to return right back to the messed up relationship that oh, y'all ain't gonna talk in here. That you was in before because you failed one class, now you want to quit school and give up on what you know God promised you? Oh, oh y'all acting. I guess I'm the only one that's thinking so to speak. That was a hero that I needed to find, and God had already promised me that I had something on the other side of the hill that allowed the hill to stop me from moving forward and desire to go back into 
the mess that I was in before I got to. Oh, y'all ain't going. That, that they desire now, they've been grumbling, complaining, and they've been tripping, young folk. They are ready to go back into Egypt in slavery where they just returned from. But the writer in Numbers chapter number, number 13 suggests to us in the very first verse of chapter number 13, if you're a journey there, he says this. And then the Lord said to Moses, he said to Moses, send men into the land to spy out the land, the land that I am going to give you. Listen to it. He said, the land that I am going to give you. God made a promise to them that out of bondage, out of Egypt, I will give you. Listen to the text. The land that I am going, not that I may be, not that you might get, but the land that I am going to give you. He tells them, go out and spy the land that I am going to give you. Watch this. If you understand the term spy, it is a verb as used here. And the verb simply is defined as this, to secretly watch or to catch sight of, which means that spy here is used visually. It is a visual term. But listen to Moses, what Moses does in chapter 13, beginning at the 17th verse, Moses says initially he does exactly what God instructs him to do. Moses says to the spies, he says, go see what the land is like. See if the people are weak or strong. See if they are few or many. See if the land is good or bad. See if it's protected or unprotected. But watch this. Listen how God's instructions get mixed up with man's instructions. God simply told Moses to go see the land. But watch this. Moses tell the spies, be bold and bring some fruit back. Does that not sound like us? God told them basic instructions, go see the land, but Moses said, go see the land and bring some material stuff back. Uh -huh. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna talk because that sounds, let me break it down for you. Is it not ironic that that's one of the things that we struggle with in churches today is that God gives us basic instructions, but we have to add our instructions to God instructions as if God is not strong enough, mighty enough, and great enough to do everything and anything without our little bit of help. We have to put our little nasty, dirty, filthy hands in trying to help God do what God has already promised us that he's going to do. Do you not understand that the instructions of God says this, that he's going to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. But is it not us that we have to add our little instructions because we get our wants mixed up with our needs. God's instructions y'all ain't going to talk says to us that it is he who finds a wife. Oh, y'all ain't gonna catch it. That receives a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. But in the 21st century, we take the instructions of God and add our own instructions. Now it seems like it's she who finds a husband. Y'all ain't gonna talk up in here. Is it not messed up that our instructions, we put them in with God's instructions? God simply told us to be a good steward over little, but it's us out here splurging, riding 24 just knowing that we can't afford them because we are putting our little instructions in our instructions. Yes. 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 God's instruction says, honor thy mother and father, but in today's time, the 21st century, our young people and the parents as well are allowing children to run over them, so it seems as if we are just adding to the instructions of God. God said, go see the land, but Moses wants to bring back some fruit. Because we think that we need to help God with God's plan for our lives. Here it is. So, so the text says that God instructs Moses secondly. He says, well, send out 12 spies. Send out one from each individual tribe of Israel, which is 12. What I believe here is that God is trying to get the Israelites to see something. Sometimes God will send us what we call subliminal messages. Sometimes God wants you to work to understand what he's trying to say to you. Because God understands, as well as you should understand, that every now and then when God promises you something, the enemy knows what God is promising you. So that's why God has to sometimes speak to us in codes so that only you can understand it. And what I think God is doing, because I understand that 
that in numerology or in spiritual numbers, the number 12 simply means a governmental perfection or a perfect government. Catch this if you can. What God is telling them is send 12 people into the land that I have promised you. So what I feel as if God is doing is he's sending them a message to let them know because the land can't operate without a government. So what God is telling them is go in and set up your government because it's already yours. And I need to talk to some folks in here tonight and ask you the question. Are you still praying about what God has already promised you? Or have you already established your government where God has made his promise? What God was trying to get Moses to do was start preparing for what was already here. And many of us, like the story of Rhoda and Peter back in the book of Acts, we're still banging at the door. Peter or the blessings banging at the door. And we're still back there in our little prayer closet. But God has already given you and promised you what you've been praying hard for. Now you need to be praying, asking God, how can I move to the next step? Because you have already received what he has promised. Amen. Are you still praying for what God has promised? Or are you already preparing because it's already yours? They, they have gone and followed the instructions of the Lord. And Jocelyn, they move into the land, and the Bible says that they began to spy out the land or examine, visually examine the land, all the way from Zen down to Kahal, which simply means that they was examining the land from the north down to the south. Or in our measurement, imagine them spying out a land from New York to California. So they were spying out the land, and the Bible says around verse number 25 that after 40 days, they returned back to Moses, to Aaron, and to the entire congregation of the Israelites, and they have a report. The Bible says that they come back and they tell the report, and this is the report that they give, my sister. They say that the land does flow with milk and honey, which means the land is exactly what God said that the land would be. But... In the land, there's some issues going on. Does that not sound like us just one more time? That is exactly what God said it would be. God has promised you something. It looks just like what God said. It is what God said. But we have an issue. The Bible says that once they get there, they begin to give a report that, yeah, it looks exactly the way God said. In fact, here is the fruit that you asked for, Moses. But there is an issue. In this land, there are people there, and they are stronger than we are. That's what a couple of the brothers say, that the people are stronger than us. There are many of them. They say that the land is so big, and the land is protected. In fact, watch this. The Bible says that they even say that our enemies are surrounding it. They go naming the Jesperites, the Amorites, the Amalekites. And then they say, on top of that, there are some Anka descendants there who were supposed to be giants. And I want to let you know tonight, my brothers and sisters, that you do have a promise, but there may be some giants in your promised land. Y'all ain't going to catch on tonight. Some of you got to understand that even on tonight, God has made some significant promises in your life, but there may be a giant in your promised land. And on top of that, the enemy may be surrounding the promise that you have. But the one thing that we cannot do is we cannot give up on God. Oh, y'all just missed that. your mom, your dad, but no, you can't give up on God, because what God wants you to do, do you not know it's a setup that God surrounded your promise with the enemy to set you up so that you can just depend on him, that you wouldn't depend on your own intellect, that you wouldn't depend on your boyfriend or your girlfriend, that you wouldn't depend on the pastor and the first lady, that you wouldn't depend on the Holy Trinity Church of God in Christ, but that you would just depend on him. It was a setup. That's why the giants are saying. Contradicting to me, brother, because I can't understand 
how you say that it's exactly what God said it was in one part of the sentence and before there's a period you place a comma and say yet yeah, we have some issues that doesn't sound like the God that I serve because I understand that good and evil don't mix it's like oil and water you can't get them to mix so how can you have this negative with this 